In the 1980s, the United States Air Force deployed a big idea. It was a new method of navigation by satellite that was predicted to have significant benefit for civilian as well as military transportation. It was then called NAVSTAR, the Global Positioning System or GPS Navigation System as it's now known. It operates by receiving signals from 24 satellites orbiting 20,200 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The GPS receiver calculates its position using signals from four or more of these GPS satellites. Four satellites are needed since the process needs a very accurate local time, more accurate than any normal clock can provide. Each GPS satellite has an atomic clock and continually transmits messages containing the current time at the start of the message and parameters to calculate the location of the satellite. The receiver uses the arrival time to compute the distance to each satellite, from which it determines the position of the receiver using geometry and trigonometry. The signals tell the receiver exactly where the satellites are and exactly what time it is. A computer then converts that information into latitude, longitude and altitude. The GPS system of today has become a big idea that has many and varied uses. At the Masai Mara Game Reserve in Kenya, elephants were fitted with GPS collars in 2006 to monitor their movement patterns. The information from the GPS collars not only helps the scientists understand behavioural habits of the elephants, but also design long-term strategies to ease human-elephant conflict in the region. In the eastern China city of Nanjing, police authorities decided enough was enough after a frightening rise in the number of bank robberies and raids on cash security vehicles. So city authorities invested 400,000 yuan or 48,000 US dollars in a satellite tracking system that enables them to keep tabs on those vehicles most at risk. The global positioning system enables police to track the movement of any vehicle connected to it via satellites to a central control room. A total of 40 emergency squad cars 30 traffic cars and 10 cash delivery trucks were hooked up to the GPS tracking system. It enabled police headquarters to know at any time the position of its vehicles. This meant that should problems arise on the cash delivery vans, help could be sent quickly in the form of the nearest police car. Back in Africa, GPS handsets are helping pygmies living in the Congo Basin Forest mark out areas critical for the survival of their community and culture. Certified logging companies are using GPS information to avoid certain areas. When Congo Republic's northern pygmies go out into the forest these days, some will be carrying handheld satellite tracking devices along with their traditional bows and spears. Using GPS handsets, the diminutive nomadic forest dwellers literally putting themselves on the map to protect their woodland livelihoods and habitat against the chainsaws and bulldozers of commercial loggers. The GPS mapping scheme has set a benchmark for conservation partnerships and the Tropical Forest Trust is working on a similar scheme in neighbouring Cameroon. In the UK, Westminster Council, which takes more than any other London council in parking fines, decided in 2005 it was time to make the system a bit fairer. Big Brother style technology was brought in to police the parking attendance. Under the radical new plans, individual parking meters were to go, to be replaced by GPS technology to ensure individual attendants don't make a mistake when writing out their tickets. Well the future is one of these things, um, which will be replacing um, nasty paper based systems with modern technology, um, a brand new uh, Windows based handheld. Um, that incorporates some mobile phone technology and also a GPS receiver so we know where the handheld is at any one point in time. As the big idea of GPS becomes more a part of our daily lives, the uses of this marvellous technology can be put to will grow every day.